Hello, everybody. Uh, for those of you who have been following my uh, YouTube channel, I'm in the process of building a new CNC router so I could offload a lot of the aluminum and other non-ferrous metal cutting from my current machine, which has an MDF table and it does make it difficult uh, keeping it clean when cutting wood because the coolants and uh, lubricants I use could stain the wood and it makes it tough for finishing. Anyway, to achieve what I want to do, I want to have mist coolant and possibly flood coolant. So I'm using Mike 6 aluminum plate, uh, aluminum extrusion, and everything's getting bolted with stainless steel bolts. I believe all the rails, the linear rails, are also stainless steel on this machine, but I'll have to check on that. Anyway, for the table surface, it's a chunk of Mike 6 cast aluminum plate, 3 quarters of an inch thick. I had the plate water jetted, and the holes were roughed out on the water jet, and then machined to final tolerance. Uh, this is done by Precision Crafted Products in Missouri, out of St. Louis, or around St. Louis. They did an excellent job of the work. Uh, extremely accurate machining from them. I'm very happy. Paul from uh, Precision Crafted was uh, very nice to deal with and very helpful. Anyway, the extrusions come from Misumi. This is their GFS series extrusions. They're very heavy duty, thick wall as you can see. Uh, a lot heavier than the comparable heavy duty Bosch extrusions. Uh, very nice anodized finish. I believe they can anodize them in different colors if you wish. Uh, for the table, I'm using 5100 and 5050. These are the 5100s for the table ends. I just have this blocked up now. Um, I want to have neoprene feet to put on my table. Underneath, I'm using 5050 for the table stretchers. I'm also using 5100 for the gantry uprights and a pretty massive 100-200 extrusion for the gantry itself. Now I'm also using Mike 6 plate for my carriage and saddle assembly. As you can see here, this is a 1 inch piece of Mike 6, uh, 5 eighths for the interface between the bearing blocks and the saddle and to also space out so I have room for the ball screw, uh, all precision ground ball screws. The actual carriage plate itself is 5 eighths. As you can see, there are uh, two sets of five uh, bolts. This is for my spindle, and the spindle will have a plate that attaches with three bolts on each side, but the way I have it planned out, I can move the spindle up and down so I can limit the amount of actual Z travel that uh, that occurs, which should uh, give me the sturdiest setup for whatever job I have. Anyway, all the linear rails are uh, THK profile rails. I have uh, HSR 30s for the gantry axis, which I'm calling the Y since I plan to work off the front of the machine. They're uh, pretty huge. It's tough to see, but I had precision crafted machine a groove on each side of my uh, my table plate where the rails get bolted on. This is so I have a datum uh, edge to push my rails against. This ensures that I have these rails parallel to each other within 
and level uh, to have been at least 0 .001 inches. So it took uh, a lot of guesswork and setup out of the equation. All I had to do was push against one edge of the slot and bolt them down. For lead screws, I'm using all Kuroda GG1515 series for the X and Y axis. These are precision ground, uh, C5 accuracy. The bearing blocks are from Marchant Dice out in the UK. They're a SYK brand, C3 accuracy. As you can see I have it bolted onto the plate. I will have a similar setup here on the Y axis or the x-axis once it's done. I have THK SHS 25s here on the x-axis and uh, the SHS series are a lot quieter than the HSR because the bearings are caged as opposed to the HSR series which has loose balls. Uh, I believe the load ratings are the same but SHS uh, do run a lot smoother. For the Z-axis, I'm using THK's low-profile HRW21s. They're about the same height as a HSR15, but they're, uh, I'd say, almost twice as wide, so uh, they can take a pretty good load, as you can see here. For the Z-axis, I'm using a Kuroda ball screw also, but it has a uh, five millimeter, I, I, no, sorry, four millimeter pitch, so I won't be taxing the stepper motor as much. Uh, every stepper will turn the screw via uh, timing belt and timing pulley. I plan to use uh, 380 inch ounce steppers. Here's one of them. So I have to make some bearing plates and, uh, I'm sorry, uh, stepper plates. And uh, I have to make them adjustable for adjusting the tension on the belts. Anyway, uh, here's the gantry or y-axis movement. Now it does take uh, a little bit of force to push this because of the preload on the bearing blocks but as you can see, the movement is very smooth and accurate. There's no play or rack whatsoever between the two sides, even though I don't have my transverse plate attached yet. But there will be a plate coming across, which will also hold the uh, walnut carrier for uh, this axis which will give me the movement I need. Now for the Y, you can hear how much smoother these SHS rails sound because the balls are caged, they you don't know, clank against each other. And uh, I'm not going to know for sure how much uh, this will affect, say, the finish quality on what I cut, but no. I think uh, if I had the opportunity, I would swap the x-axis rails of SHS-30. Now for the carriage, I have it blocked so that it doesn't slide down. Uh, it is a rather heavy plate, but the movement's also very smooth and accurate. Um, anyway, I'm just going to back up so you can see a couple more views of this machine. Hopefully in the coming weeks I'll have the stepper plates made. I'm still uh, deciding what I'm going to use in terms of timing belts and time and pulleys. And that's it. Thanks for looking.